Okay, so this is going to be a video on simple harmonic motion. I hope it's not going to be too long, but there is quite a lot to say. Most of this I've said already, but um, I want to go over it um, on a video so that you can pause it and, and go over it again if you need to. So, um, maybe we'll start by just considering something that does simple harmonic motion. So, if we start off with a mass attached to a spring and we'll say that the mass is on a totally frictionless surface and this is the equilibrium position um, of the mass if you pull it to the side and let go it will oscillate from left to the right um, being pulled and pushed backwards and forwards by the spring uh, in simple harmonic motion well how do we know it's simple harmonic motion and what makes it simple harmonic motion in this case, uh, the horizontal force from the spring, F, is going to be minus Kx, where x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. So if we say that that way is positive, if we displace it to the right, the spring is going to pull to the left. So the force is proportional to the extension and uh, in the opposite direction. Um, F equals MA, so therefore MA equals minus KX, and for a spring, mass spring system, therefore A equals minus K over MX. Now, K and M, if we don't alter them, if we don't alter the spring or the mass, then K and M are constants. Therefore, we could express this as a proportionality. Acceleration is proportional to minus X. The displacement okay so this is like the defining feature of simple harmonic motion as far as the exam board is concerned the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and is, is in the opposite direction that's what defines simple harmonic motion where does this take us to well this next bit so anything you need to know I'll highlight by putting a red box around it anything you don't need to know I won't so that thing uh, with the red box around it you need to know probably more in words than, than in math, maths like that, but you need to know that that defines simple harmonic motion. Um, this thing here, you do need to know at some point actually about, about springs, but not immediately. So don't worry about that too much for now. Um, now, what is this? Well, so this is a bit you don't need to know. This turn, it turns out this is a, a, a differential equation, which I've talked about before, which is saying that the acceleration is the second derivative with respect to time of displacement. So if you differentiate displacement with respect to time once, you get velocity. If you differentiate it, differentiate it again, you get acceleration. So this is saying the second derivative of displacement with respect to time equals minus k over mx. This is what's called a differential equation, and you do not need to be able to solve it. Okay? What you do need to know is that one possible solution to this is x equals a cos omega t okay now this is one possible solution there are an infinite number of solutions so this is not the only one but this is the one that's in the textbook and it suits us just fine okay so you don't need to know how that is a solution uh, of, of that differential equation but if you can work it out then that's great um, so what does this mean? Well, what does the graph look like? Okay, saying our displacement is x is changing over time, and you need to know also what the graph looks like, which I'll do on a new, a new uh, slide. So here we have displacement x. Here we have time t, and it's a cosine. So it's going to look something like this where x equals a cos omega t okay now cos of anything varies between 1 and minus 1 okay so this bit here goes from 1 to minus 1 so if we multiply that by a then it's going to vary from a to minus a so a is the amplitude or alternatively the 
maximum displacement. Didn't fit on the board there. Um, <clears throat> we can say a bit more as well. Um, how often does this repeat? Well, the graph of cos theta uh, or cos x or cos whatever repeats every time the angle, which this thing here in here is an angle, every time that gets to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, the whole thing repeats. Okay, so when does this thing repeat? Well, it repeats when omega t is equal to 2 pi radians or 4 pi radians or 6 pi radians. Every time omega t uh, gets to 2 pi radians or 4 pi radians or 6 pi radians, you're back to the start when it was 0 radians, i.e. you're back to this displacement of plus a. Okay, when does that happen? Well, omega is 2 pi f, or omega is 2 pi over big T, the period. So therefore, omega little t is going to be 2 pi little t over big T. Now, When does all of this lot equal 2 pi? The first time it repeats. The first time it repeats is when the time is exactly equal to the period. Because when the time is exactly equal to the period, then this is 2 pi times big T over little t, which is 2 pi. So the first time it repeats, the first time it gets back to a displacement of plus a is at a time t. The next time it will get back to there is when the time is then 2t. Okay, so this graph, oops, trod on my microphone cable. Uh, this graph repeats every time the time is a multiple of the period. So after one period goes by, we're here, back to where we were at the start. After two periods have gone by, we'll be back over there, 2t, and so on. So you need to know the shape of the graph, the cos graph. You need to know it varies between plus a and minus a, and it repeats every time the period. <clears throat> There's a whole number of periods, so one period, two periods, three. Lovely. Okay, you need to know that. What happens if we differentiate displacement with re if you differentiate displacement with respect to time, you get velocity. So x dot equals v equals. We've got to differentiate this now. Cos differentiates to minus sine, and we've got to multiply what by the derivative of what's inside. Don't worry if you can't do this. Uh, you don't need to be able to do it, but this is just where it comes from. So it's going to be minus omega a. Whoops, started writing cos there. That should have been sine. Sorry about that. So minus omega a sine omega t. You don't need to know that, but you do need to know what the graph looks like. So essentially you do need to know it, uh, and you need to know another feature of it as well. So underneath this graph, we're going to do the graph of velocity against time, which is minus omega a sine omega t. Right. Now we've got velocity here. <coughs> now it's a minus sine, okay? And we're going to try and keep it matching the graph above. So if we call this, sorry match the colors. If we call this t, we're going to try and get it to, to match up with that. So it's a minus sine graph. Now sine looks like this, okay, but it's a minus sine, so we can't do that. Got to minus sine it. Something like this. Uh, it's not wonderful, but it will do. Now, I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff here, because it's going to get in the way. What on earth just happened there? Come back. Now, remember the formula is V equals minus omega A sine of omega T. So it's a minus sine graph. Sine, once again, varies between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so now the amplitude of this is not going to be A. Okay, this bit here varies between 1 and minus 1. So this bit here is effectively the amplitude of this graph. So this is omega a, and this is minus 
omega a and likewise because we've got this omega t in the in the as the um, angle effectively of our sine it's going to repeat once again every t so you do need to know uh, that the shape of the graph would be this shape the minus sine and you also need to know that v max the maximum velocity is omega a okay let me start putting some red boxes on here so you do need to know that the maximum displacement we call a the amplitude the maximum velocity is omega a and you do need to know the shape of this graph this is on the formula sheet as far as i know so you need to memorize it but you need to be aware of it okay so there's quite a lot of stuff you need to know here the shapes of the graphs and what the maximum of each thing is so things are going well we're two-thirds of the way there all we've got to deal with now is acceleration so what are we going to do we're going to differentiate once more with respect to time okay notice there is no red box around this because you don't need to know it now if we differentiate again with respect to time that gives us acceleration now sine differentiates to cos but we're going to have another multiple of omega so now it's going to be minus omega squared a cos omega t okay so now we're going to have a minus cos graph for our acceleration not a cos minus cos so now <clears throat> let's just get some axes this is now going to be acceleration time this is our period t now we're going for a minus cos which is going to look a bit like this okay once again what's the amplitude of this well a equals minus omega squared a cos omega t cos omega t varies between minus one and one so this thing here is essentially our amplitude so our maximum acceleration is going to be omega squared a this is going to be minus omega squared a okay now you notice the shape of this graph is exactly the mirror image in the x-axis of the displacement graph okay um, which is what you know you know that the <clears throat> the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the displacement and is proportional to it so let's just get this down to be 100% sure so a max the maximum acceleration therefore is going to be omega squared a once again you need to know that but it's on the formula sheet so you have to memorize it okay you need to know it's there so you need to know the shape of these three different graphs given the shape of the first graph you'd be expected to work out the shape of the other graphs or know them uh, and also know that the maximum displacement we call a the amplitude the maximum velocity is omega a the maximum ampl um, the maximum acceleration is omega squared a now just remember that omega can be expressed as 2 pi f or as 2 pi over t so you may see versions of this that, that are expressed in other terms so for example a max could be expressed as omega squared a or it could be expressed as 4 pi squared f squared a if you like just by using this version of omega so I can't remember exactly what's on the formula sheet um, but bear in mind it might be phrased in terms of a different rearrangement of omega I like to use omega just because it's short okay and it doesn't take up too much space but you're welcome to use any other replacement for omega that you like so we're nearly there there's a few things we need to know like we need to know that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and in the opposite direction we need to know one form one solution of this differential equation which can describe um, simple harmonic motion for us but just quickly now um, we'll have a look at the one in red and the one in green okay which you don't need to know but you'll see that they're actually very similar okay because we've got x up the top here 
being equal, equal to a cos omega t. Well, we've got an a cos omega t in here. So that a cos omega t could just as well be x. Therefore, we could say that the acceleration a is also minus omega squared x. Okay, this you do need to know and apply. So the acceleration is minus omega squared x for simple harmonic motion. That's always the case. Uh, and we could then apply that to a specific situation to find out something interesting. So if we go all the way back up to uh, our spring system here with this red dotted box, we also know that a equals minus k over mx for this particular situation. Okay, this is just for the mass spring oscillator. But if you compare that formula in red to the formula above, you can see that k over m must eat in this case. So omega squared for a mass spring system is k over m. And from that, you could work out the period because omega is 2 pi over t. So we can have an expression with t the period in and relate that to our k over m. And if you follow that through, you'll work out an expression for the period of a mass spring system in terms of k, the, the spring constant, and m, the mass um, that is oscillating backwards and forwards. Now, I won't do that now, because that's kind of like a, a job for slightly later on when you look at pendulums and mass spring oscillators in more detail. But just to recap, you need to know, for all simple harmonic motion, the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and in the opposite direction. One solution is x equals a cos omega t, where a is the maximum displacement, the amplitude of the oscillations measured in meters or something like that. You also need to know that the acceleration is always minus omega squared x for all simple harmonic motion and be able to apply that. You need to know these three graphs, what they look like, the graph of displacement against time, velocity against time, and acceleration against time and also know the maximum values for those things. So the maximum displacement is a, maximum velocity omega a, maximum acceleration omega squared a. So that's quite a lot of information I've, I've, I've given you there um, and it's covered over a couple of pages in the textbook. Um, but if you know the stuff in the red boxes and you know the graphs and you can apply this stuff to answer questions then then you're in a really good position obviously there's still a bit more to know about simple harmonic motion but if you can do that you're doing pretty well so i'll finish there and um, hopefully that'll make some sense